What up, though? Welcome to the Airbit Free Game Producer Podcast. Yeah. My name is Brian Andre. I'm here in the Bandwidth Studios with yeah. the big homie, the super producer, the multi-platinum producer, Will Power. What up, homeboy? What it do? What it do? <laughs> Yo, man, we blessed yeah. to be here, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We got a very, very, very dope episode, man. Yeah. Coming up, man. One of my favorite producers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It kind of boggles my mind that, like, I was a big fan of this dude, man, years ago. And now it's kind of like one of the homies now. You know what I'm saying? We got focus, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. On this show. Yeah, man. Dope episode. And then Mark Bird came came through. Yeah, no, Mark Bird pulled up, man. But focus and Mark Bird are like, uh, you know, a peas in the pod to me, man. You know what I'm saying? When When I look back on all of my you know, encounters with them and all the shit that we've been through, man. It's like, it's really dope because those two guys have gone from being really productive in Atlanta and then moving out to LA, Mm -hmm. you know, um, thanks to our standard, man, you know what I'm saying? We got like this really dope community of producers that like, you know, just really fuck with each other, man. So it's super dope to have them on the show. Um, yeah, focus got a lot going on, man. He's got these, uh, uh, faders up type of events where he's like a kind of like a master class type of joint i mean mark bird is out here getting like all these crazy placements man. yeah he had the intro and rhapsody album got man. the rhapsody crazy. joints he yeah. had the, you know the uh sci high joints that yeah. he was killing out here sure. he did the uh kanye shit you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying it's crazy can't, can't forget that yeah the yeah. homie man so yeah it's dope man what's been up though Man, just out here working man yeah you know what i'm saying you you, you find out that uh it ain't easy when you got a a, a new artist trying to you know Get them going, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's fun. Though. You, Gary Vee said you got to love the process, man. So I'm Absolutely, falling in man. love with the process of just the challenge every day. You know what I'm saying? I think I think it's dope, man. I mean, I I noticed that you uh, moved him from Detroit or mm-hmm. he moved himself. I'm not really sure how mm-hmm. it worked out, but I noticed that you guys have come together here in Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, from Detroit to the A. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great place for him to come, you know, as an artist. Uh, Pesos is yep, his name Peso, right. Yep. I just want to say his name right, man. I, I sure. apologize. Uh yeah, he's super dope, man. I think I'll I be yeah. watching, man. I'll be on online. I'll be like, yo, what they, what they doing, man? Yeah, so, we're putting out music every week. So, you know. Yeah, he just dropped something, right? Every week, every Friday. Yeah. We got a new record. One week, he had a feature that came out, so we yeah. used that as as a record. But yeah, he, he wanted to do something every Friday. So, and yeah. he, we got a gazillion songs. So. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, man. That's dope, man. Well, yeah, man. Well, I wish you luck on that shit, man. Thank and, you, man. Uh, you know, let's get right into this show, man. It's going to be crazy, man. All the producers, man, need to be mm-hmm. tuned in. This one right here is one of those legendary moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did like a round table. For sure. You know what I'm saying? It was, uh, wasn't was really like planned, nah. which makes this dope. So, uh, you know, appreciate y'all tuning in, man. It's Airbit, Free Game Producer Podcast. Let's get it, man. We in this thing. Free Game. Sir. What up, though? We are here at Bandwidth Studios. Brian Andre. I got the homeboy CJ in the building. I got the uh, big homie, the super producer, the multi-platinum producer, Will Power, in the building. Will and Power. we got a legend with us, a Grammy Award winning legend. I think he sold over, his records have sold over 50 million Ooh. copies worldwide. You know what I'm saying? We got the homeboy <laughs> Focus in the building. How y'all doing today? Hey. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Yo, it's a blessing to be here. We're here to talk about this, to say the music production, about you know everything that's going on with the war of producers. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So first, how y'all feeling today? Man, I'm feeling good, bro. My homie that came in from Cali, man. I feel hey. like I just got a Christmas present in October. <laughs> <laughs> no, how you doing, is, brother? Man, bandwidth is beautiful. Bro. Thank you, man. It is beautiful over here. I feel great, man, and I appreciate you guys having me, man. It's super man, cool. well, so last we talked, you were making that pilgrimage out to the West Coast. One of the many times. One yeah. of the many times, <laughs> but. This time it felt for real. Yeah. You know, I was, uh, it was like watching my brother go away, just waving, <laughs> you know. But I, I, slow motion. I'm, there's a part of me that's really glad that you went because I've seen some amazing things happen since then. Thank Let's you. start there. Let's okay. talk about your journey, man, and like what's been going on and uh, what's really good with that. Um, I think that this was just, it was time to, to go back and kind of go where the work is. Yeah. You know, um, I love Atlanta. Um, it's always been uh, something near and dear to my heart. But then that back and forth started really wearing on my, yeah. me and my family. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, L.A. has respect, um, has respected my career up till now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, yeah. and when I say that, I mean, like, honestly, I can go out there and I can drum up work. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot easier. We know here um, everybody knows everyone here so there it's it's unfortunately it's clicked up if you will yeah yeah you know what i'm saying so it's kind of harder to get into 
those doors and yeah. those those rooms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, LA just open armed me. Yeah. You know, so it's time to go back and and put the smack down. <laughs> well, you definitely been doing that, man. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's been fun to watch, man. Um, you know, during this process, though, a lot of things have been changing in the you know in the production world. The producers becoming more. Um, we're becoming more, more well known. People yeah, are starting visible. to kind of yeah. more visible. Yeah. We're not so behind the scenes now. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, engineers are starting to kind of step out. You're starting to learn the names. Like I've heard Jason Joshua's name more times in the last year yeah. than I probably have yeah. anyone in. You know, as a, from an engineering standpoint, just yeah. uh, it's just really dope how things are growing. Like, what's your what? How do how do you see that? Like, what does that what does that mean to you? Um. I love the fact that these things are happening, but we are just revolving. It's it's going in a circle, mm -hmm. and this is the the same exact ushering in of the super producer. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So now we're gonna have the the super songwriter, the super. You know what I'm saying? Sean Garrett was a super songwriter. That's right. Um, uh, my boy that uh, wrote all them hits. I'm I'm losing his name right now, but he became a, a, a an artist as well, and he worked over with Red Zone. Who? You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, um, Dream. Dream. Yeah, Dream's mm -hmm. yeah, a super sure. songwriter. You know what for I'm sure. saying? So now we're talking. We're talking about literally. We're seeing this be reushered in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Um, if you're behind the scenes, and this, this is the only way that they're gonna know who we are. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because right. nobody is. They're not singing our songs. Um, and what I mean that I mean like literally, they're not going out going, man. Will Power did this and that, blah blah blah. Right. They're talking about themselves and they're talking about you know the music. Yeah. They don't ever talk about the music maker. That's right. So that's big. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that's different though in this day and age, and I want you all to speak to this, is that back in the day, producers pretty much when you were called to work on a project. You were kind of paid up front for your work. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. now they want you all to work. Where they do that at? <laughs> and it's like now, you know, producers are starting to get credit, but they want you all to work. Yeah. And you might get paid if you use something. Yes, kind of 100%. thing. So how do you survive and navigate in that kind of environment when they want you to just kind of work for free and maybe get get a placement and get paid? You, you don't. You don't. You don't right. survive. It's it's a struggle every day. Yeah. And it it that's what wears and tears on all creatives because you start to think. Why am I doing this? Right. Especially when there is no end result. There's no end goal or, you know, like there's no, you're not meeting anything if you're just doing a whole bunch of work and you're not getting paid for your work. This is, to me, the music industry is the only place where there are slavery moments. For sure. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Like it's, you literally go in there and you give your all. And you don't, you may never see a check. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And it's all in aspiration or in hopes of getting, like, that's too much, bro. Yeah, it's a lot. Like, even cats that sit on the bench in, in basketball, they, they get paid. Absolutely. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. It's like, a good point. That's they, right. They may not even see a game, right. but they Practice get paid. Squad. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Hey. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, in my own life, you know, it's forced me to have to find other ways to make money, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I mean, the, the the music industry has been good in the sense of when they do pay and when yeah. they do yeah. what what's what they proper. say they're going to yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's a great place to be. It's a great great situation, great job, whatever you want to call it. But right. at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, you can't do six months with no income. It's impossible to do six months with, with no income. You want to mm -hmm. you want to go even deeper than that? Be married and try that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't. Hey, yo. bro, you can't go two weeks without making some income. That's right. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's yeah. you got to show your wife stability. You got to show her security. How are you doing that when you don't know where your next check is coming? That's from? That's right. You know? Kids need consistency. A hundred percent, bro. Yeah. Yeah, and that's scary. So you know, I know, I know. For me, part of why the the whole studio and all these other little hustles that. I had to come up with it was because of that. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, it's real fun when the album's been a drop and you know them, you know it's coming. Yeah. That's a good couple of months, you know what I mean? But then if you're not wise with the money, mm. and, and here's the unfortunate thing. Most times you could be very wise with your money, but you're so behind yeah, waiting because, on yeah. it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, let's say you yeah. go make a $70,000 lick. By the time you get it, if it's been six months, that's really not that much money for All a family. All you're doing is going back and paying yeah. retro. Yeah, you're yeah. paying retro, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Mama, mom threw you something. You gotta throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> so how, do, how do we navigate? How do we navigate? You know, how do we like, uh, or or even maybe turn it around? How do we like demand? It will never happen. Yeah, I the, think this is the only industry that's not. It's not gonna happen like that because there's too much money being made. Yeah, in the industry. Yes, right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like they don't care about the creative and the and the well being of the creative. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we are cows to them. And all and they I, care about is the steak. And I agree. <laughs> I agree with you on that. And I also think a lot of it has to do with the lack of education in it. Hundred percent. Um, they, you know, I think they prey on the songwriters and pro- producers that don't have the information. Yeah. So there's always a guy where where I might be ten thousand dollars a track, or you know, he might be twenty thousand dollars a track, or wherever the fees are. There's a guy that'll do the same thing for a thousand bucks. That's right. Mm-hmm. And that makes it really hard for them to even care about a producer that's more established or, you know, actually knows the value of even the guy that took the thousand dollars. Yeah. It's like you gotta understand that <clears throat> it's worth more than that. You know, especially yeah. in this era when we're counting on streaming money, like uh them pennies are really not even pennies yet. They're not even <laughs> pennies. Yeah. They don't even add up to a penny. It don't yeah. even matter. So, it, I, yeah, I agree. I don't know that it's ever going to change. I think that... Um, I think do- the only thing that's going to change it, Will, is uh, the independent movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, when everybody starts going independent and we start to remove the big machines... That's right. That's what's going to change. Yeah. Because now we're getting direct income. That's right. And there is no middleman. Yeah. And I don't have to feed the the... Fat pig. That's you right. feel what I'm saying? This like now it's all coming straight to me and going directly to yeah. my family and my legacy. Yeah. Well, and so here's another thing. We started talking about it yesterday. So yeah, what it's yeah. doing this independent thing, it's a really it's really promising. Yeah. Because now what it's doing for us as producers is allowing us to not only work on the royalty and uh you know copyright side, but now yeah. we're actually we can talk masters now. That's right. Because of the independent side of 100%. it. It's like you own it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so it's a lot less it's not as much to me to have to get five thousand dollars from an indie artist when I know that they may give me two grand right. and I can own half of the masters or or a percentage of the master with them. Right, right, right. Now we all have actual stake in a record and now we all have You have a commodity. Yeah, you we have, have an asset. We yeah. have an asset. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm excited about that part. I agree with you. I think yeah. um and I think it's happening faster than people. Are, it is. Yeah, people are starting yeah. to be like, uh, "Label what? I just need yeah. distribution, bro." That's it. You know what so I'm saying? Why do you think Empire is doing so well? Killing them. Yeah. Can I touch on a little bit of what we talked about last night? Yes, sir. I think y'all are absolutely right in this master ownership thing. I think that is going to be the thing to change the the major label situations. Yeah, yeah. I think streaming helps creatives. Everybody talks about streaming and the money is small, and that may be true, but I think it helps in our favor. Mm-hmm. Because now, if you think about it, these major labels are marketing companies. They are. They okay. always have been. Yeah, yeah. But that's, there's no physical product anymore. Right, 100%. Mm. So that's really what you need a major for. They're right. marketing companies. Yeah. Outside of that, what can they do for you? Right. You mm-hmm. have access to They can to the take f- your money. Right, because <laughs> that's all they're doing. And your master, taking, yeah, taking your master. <laughs> and your ma- right. But see, you have access to the same internet they do. Right, but the bad thing about and and I hear you, and you're absolutely correct in part of it. But the streaming is killing us. Yeah, yeah, it's killing us because we're getting we're getting. Fra- I didn't understand that you can break down one because that's one cent. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. Yeah, you should not be able to break down, down one penny, one like, penny bro. Right. You should not tell me that there's <laughs> yeah. a fraction of a penny. You said point yeah. zero 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 one. Yeah, which that's half of the not penny even do you like. Want? Yeah, what is like, that? What it's is like that? you literally yeah. sl- but it, like but gave me a sliver of copper. But, <laughs> but if you have a label now, a label is giving you a fraction of that fraction. Yeah, exactly. At that point, exactly. so it'd be independent yeah. because not a lot of streaming services offer one cent. I think uh, title might be one. Maybe I think. Uh, Napster is over one cent, but most of them are under one cent. Yeah, way under. Per stream. I yeah. think Spotify is like a third of a cent yeah, or something exactly. like that. Yeah. And I know Apple a couple of years ago was fighting to get a mechanical rate going mm-hmm. per 1,000 uh, yeah. or 1,500 streams, get a mechanical rate. Yeah. And hopefully something like that will be implemented sometime but, soon. No, yeah. So great. correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, the, that's the, the crux of the whole problem. It's like without physical product, what does mechanical rate mean? Right. Right. right, because you could quantify that before, 
with X number of physical products. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you get so much that's percentage. Saying, that's a, yeah. All of this, this whole entire streaming process that's been going on is still, and I hate saying it, but it's the truth. It's still brand new. Yeah. It's still a brand new form. It's right. still a brand new um, um, platform. And they're still trying to figure out how to police it. Because yeah. they're not. There's yeah. money being made and no one knows where the money's at. Right. That's why we have to continue to kind of like, you know, shout out to people who are going to Congress, you know. Yeah, for sure. Fighting these Standing battles. Standing on the hill with yeah. Rest in peace to Busby. He was one of the, one of the ones. Yeah, that he really was a like, leader. Like yeah. fighting for like a uh, producer and songwriter rights. You yeah. Know? But we got to stay on top of that though. Yeah, yeah. for sure. As a community yeah, sure. to make sure because I, sure. I believe that it's going to be retroactive once they get it straight. They're going to go back and They're going to have to. Boy, you pay hope. Out, right? No, they're gonna throw it hey, in the black I, box. I don't black know, boxes. Yeah. I'm fighting for it, man. I ain't you counting know, on that retroactive. I'm fighting for it. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, they just they yeah. throw it in the black I mean, box. Yeah, elections yeah. coming up. This is something that that as creatives you got to be aware of when it comes to camp- campaigns. That this is something yeah. that's important to you. Yeah, hundred percent. What candidates are talking about this kind of stuff? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, right bandwidth, right. baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the last time we talked to you, I think was a couple of years ago, was when uh, Compton had came out. Yes. And since then, you've done so much. I mean. We're talking off camera about the uh, Anderson Pack Oxner album when you yes. worked with Q Tip and, and Anderson. You know, yeah. you've got the Little Brother album that came out this year, which is one of my favorites. So, what have you been up to the past few years? Talk to us about that. Um, I have been building whatever the next step in my career is. Um, I've negated to break an artist my whole career, and I think that that's hurt me. Um, because it doesn't really solidify you as um, a reputable brand if you work for someone, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I worked for Dr. Dre, but Dr. Dre broke Eminem, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, not, you know what sure. I'm saying? Right. Focus hasn't broken anybody. Yeah. You know, Timbaland broke Aaliyah, Missy. This Focus hasn't broken. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, now I'm, I'm kind of doubling back, looking for an artist that's going to make me excited to want to stay in the studio. Yeah. Um, I built a company with my, my wife called Envision, um, and I actually signed myself to my company. She manages me. And, mm, congrats. And yeah, That's thank dope. you so much. Yeah, so I got a project coming out um, November 6th. And then November 9th, I'm doing a master class called Faders Up. And that's, you know, um, Siege knows. Yeah. Uh, CJ knows that that's been in my heart to teach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm doing that. And then uh, just working on new music. Y'all just got to thank God they're putting out uh, – the credits, because, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, y'all just going to have to look where I'm at, because yeah. I can't be That's like... <laughs> Public <laughs> you know? service announcement. Focus has said a million times that he wasn't rapping anymore. I rapped on <laughs> one record. Listen, <laughs> Lord. listen. I just heard the proof. Yeah. Focus is rapping. I did, too. Nice. I was like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. what's going on here? <laughs> That's but I would, say, I would say, you know, you said you hadn't broken any artists, but I would say that you can make a s- small argument. You've played a, a big role in Marsha Ambrosius. Career because when I think about her, I think about all the records you all have done. Yeah, you know, from the mixtape to the placements. So yeah, she's like I, a great relationship. Yeah. A great, it's yeah, like, and she's like my sister. But yeah. then you can't turn a, a blind eye to floetry and yeah. all the time right, right. she's that's spent true. in the trenches. You know that's what I'm true. saying? So that's a that's an easy go to. Um, but it's it's still I haven't had a chance to break an artist. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and I want to find somebody that. Honestly, they believe in me as much as I believe in them, and then you know we go out and put the stuff yeah. down. Yeah, that's a good feeling. I mean, I, that's that's kind I'm, of my of course that's you know. my yeah, motto. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm really that's what I I, I strive for that. Um, yeah. But on the other the other side of it, I wish that in some cases I had taken time to jump on jobs and opportunities that there were presented go. to me yeah. that I walked away from because I was trying to break an artist, and mm-hmm. then. You know, of course, the artist didn't work out, or this, that, right. and the third. So it's like it's it's kind of two sided. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that I'm that I think people should know about you is the mentorship role that you've played with so many of us. Like uh, when you were in Atlanta, man. Y'all not like, trying to make me cry. Nah, nah, not, not nope. at all. We are just trying to point <laughs> nope. it out because it, it needs Sukari to be stated. About to, no, go ahead. Not nah, real talk, man. Like <laughs> I know for a fact that like Mark Bird is pretty much where he is and who he is based off of some of your influence like oh, wow. you were one of the guys who like first judged him in a beat battle and cu- encouraged oh, yeah, him to yeah. keep going like bro you, maybe you didn't win tonight but bro you have it and so keep going and like those things played in the back of his mind over and over I, i've spoken to oh, him yeah. and i know this 
Yeah. And so, That's a and next thing you know, I look online one day and he's actually in with Dre and he's out there with you yeah, and he's yeah, working. Yeah. And that's another thing that I like about you is you've never been greedy with your resources. No, no. Like Dr. Dre is like Dr. Dre. So <laughs> nobody can really get to him except you. <laughs> <laughs> and many times I've called and he's tried to make a play just for people. And yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that that's something people need to know. Oh, yeah. wow. Let me oh, say this so on much, record, man. if I may. Yeah. Focus is part of the reason why I'm here. Part of the reason why I'm at bandwidth. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll give you the short version. I met Focus because he was doing Producers Nation online before hey, IG streaming. Hey. Yo, we going back. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Before Facebook and IG Live, he would get on Ustream and That's basically right. listen to give us feedback on beats. That's right. I sent beats. I found out he lived in Atlanta. We kind of linked up. I'll skip some of the yeah. minutia. But fast forward to year after year, Focus would tell me, you need to do this I standard thing. You need to get in the showcase. Uh, and for years, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I finally started doing it, started meeting people. That's how I met Willpower. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. And and from there, you know, long story short, I ended up here. Yeah, and yeah. I was too scared to do the showcase. And Focus um, and Kells, rest in peace. Oh, yeah. Kells, um, man. Yeah, but yeah. I got to give her a credit though. For sure. Yeah. Those two. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been rocking with iSander. She brought me an iSander. Mm. So I just wow, wanted to so give that man. credit too when you talk about mentorship. All right, man. So I had a oh mentor God, that brought me. Let's, let's lighten this up just a God little bit. Like, <laughs> and we got all some tissue. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, God, we need some tissue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I look at both of you like mentors to me. Yeah, brother, that's dope, thank you man. so much. That's you were talking about Dre. We were talking 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 off offline about um wow. the uh, Anderson Pack record uh, Cheers. Yeah. Which you know, uh, and about your role in it. That's one of my favorite records. I love Oxnard a whole lot. The album. It was, Me I think too. It was, I, think it was I mixed. thought it was a great. I album. I think yeah. it was mixed so well. The uh, sonics of the album is amazing. But talk about that Cheers record in particular because you work with Q Tip on that particular record. Yeah, I uh, we were all at Dre's house, um, and Q Tip came through, and he was just going through different um, sample splices that he had, and that guitar came on, and Dre was like, "What's that?" And so he started getting that together that's the first thing like literally when the record comes on you heard what we heard in the studio nice wow so when that started going like dre literally let it build the exact way it built yeah because drums came in later exactly yeah. so we you know he started doing that and dre was like cool all right let me hear some drums and i just started going through drum loops that i had and that's the drum that you hear that comes in and trevor played on it like we had a whole bunch nice. of building up later but um, at the house, like it was just really just Dre orchestrating it mm -hmm. and just working in the parentheses of Q Tip and Dre. I was, I was like a little kid, bro. <laughs> I was like a little kid. I mean, Anderson was there. It was just the synergy and the energy in the room was surreal. That's it was dope. crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's an amazing song, too. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you. That's thank crazy. you so much. Man, so, um, so let's talk about something that you're incredible at that people may not know is your ability to mix records. Oh, thank you. Yes. So I would like to address that because myself, I've become a better, I've become better at that. Okay. And a lot of it is because I always wanted my records to sound how I hear them in my head. Right. And I never really knew how to do that. Mm -hmm. But there's so many dope producers out here who are just missing that part of it. Right. And so could you speak to the importance of that? And, um, and mixing, yeah, because I think I think yeah. when you say mixing, sometimes people immediately go to like this technical space. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that that's and that's something that I'm definitely going to start touching on, um, in my master classes. Yeah. Um, it's the industry has eclipsed the creative side, mm -hmm. so unfortunately, it's more important to be part of the industry than it is part of the music. You see what I'm saying? Boy, so so it. many free people, game. Yeah. <laughs> free game. <laughs> so everybody's forgetting the fact that the industry is built off of this creative process and they've just kind of disconnected themselves from the creative process to get to the bag. Right. You know, and there's way more talk about the bag than there is about this creative process. When I mix, I want people to feel what I'm putting in my track. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I have to <clears throat> I have to emanate and, 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 and do a whole bunch of stuff so you understand what I was thinking. Just like you said, I want to 
make my track sound the way it does in my head. Mm. But how do I put the audience in inside of my head? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So well, that would explain how those kicks and snares. Exactly. That was my question. <laughs> Your drum mixing to me, like, I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I can't think of anybody who has better drums Sonics. Dr. This is Dre. true. <laughs> <laughs> like, but Dr. Yeah. Dre is my mentor, and yeah. and DJ Premier is my mentor. Um, and learning from them, Dilla's my mentor. Uh, Q Tip's my mentor. Like I'm I'm from the East Coast, so if you listen to East Coast records all through time, it's about our drums. Since since we're talking about mentors, because yeah. a lot of people don't know it, and I hate to do the whole cliche every time someone interviews you. But like, let's talk about like your father, sure, and who he is, and sure, you know. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know who you are in that comp- in that lineage. Yeah. That's my for my dad to be mentioned. That's that's where my whole rhythm and pocket come from. My dad is uh, or was when he was alive the bass player for Chic. So um, yeah. everything yeah. that I've ever learned, you know, just listening to. We still dancing to them. Yeah, bass word. Though. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but like just my dad, without hands-on teaching me, taught me about the importance of pocket and the, mm. and how um, a track is rounded off by the drums and the bass. Mm-hmm. So everything that I've ever watched him do and everything he's ever written, I studied it from the bottom up. So I'm I'm listening to the drums, I'm listening to the bass, and I'm trying to understand why he picked those rhythms and that pentameter and this and that, blah, blah, blah. So that's the stuff that he's kind of imprinted on me. But then all of it went, you know, like the Bomb Squad. I'm, I was a big P.E. fan. And so just listening to those drums, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Listening to everybody's drums just having this impact. And whether you like the record or not, you're nodding. And I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going to do with all of my music. If you don't like my record, you're going to nod to it just because it's going to smack you in your face. Mm-hmm. You have no other choice. You'd be yeah. like, yo, that's cool. But them drums, <laughs> I'm yeah. always going to get the mm. ugly face because of the drums. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I keep an ugly face listening to your music. Yeah. <laughs> I left up. the room today because of yeah. Straight up. Somebody said I had PTSD. <laughs> Oh no! I think it was beat TSD. Because <laughs> I got, I got. That's yo, listen, we had a, a we one. had a beat battle at a SAE one time. Yeah. yeah, something man. Back in like 2015, he came like in this building and played that beat today. <laughs> yeah, no, so, but yeah, it wasn't. I, just, I didn't even think about that, yo. What was it for? Like a cartoon network? Uh, yeah, or something? yeah, yeah. It was something yes, cool. It was something exactly really cool. Was for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it was so crazy because when the beat came on, I was like. Right. Okay, so here's the thing. When they say beat battle, I heard what people were playing. And I'm like, they're playing towards the assignment. They're not playing towards the battle. That's right. So when everybody was playing their beats, I'm like, nah. You're right. No, bro. Right. What's like, up? I was like, no. I playing. wanted I wanted the track. Exactly. No. I wanted <laughs> I wanted my track to make the speakers bleed. And when that thing came on, was I was crazy. like, oh, this is easy. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. That was crazy. <laughs> Combat Jack. He think he he uh hosted that. Yes. Be yes. Yes. Oh, oh, man. Man. Jeez, great man. moments, man. Great moments. We lost a lot of great people, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Sheesh. Life is short, man. God, you know, we, hey. we got to make the best out of what God has given us, man. Yeah, I'm here with brethren right now, man. Yeah. Love y'all, bro. Yeah, on, man, a, on, a, on a creative man, level, on a spiritual level, on a on a physical level. You guys are, are great people. So I just yes, appreciate sir. this, man. Are y'all enjoying this Sukari the way I am? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> this uh, mug has uh, room enough for your entire hand. <laughs> So okay. we can fill it up to the rim. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of drums, you all were playing beats before we started recording. And mm-hmm. I heard a beat in the hallway. I had to come in here to just shake your hand again. I think I posted about it when it came out. Oh, I was man. driving to Orlando, Florida f- for work uh, when Little Brother album came out. Hey. And this song came on. Highway it, music. It was so hard. It was called Black Magic. It was so hard. I didn't know you produced it, bro. It was so hard. And I'm, I'm a nerd. So I had to put. I had to literally pull over because I wanted to find out who produced this beat. Literally. <laughs> literally it was so hard. The drums were right. like so hard. I'm just a nerd. I had to pull over the rest stop to see mm. who pre- I said, focus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you and for all you who don't know, he produced two songs on a Little Brother's uh, latest album. Uh, yeah, I did three. I oh, did three, okay. Um, Black Magic, Good Morning, Morning Sunshine, Sunshine, and then I halved uh Work Through Me Lord. 
So ah, I, did, okay. I did the music on okay. it. Mm. So I pulled over and I had to see who, produ- who produced this song. Yeah. This is an amazing song. I'm yeah. just a nerd like that. And I saw you produced it. So yes, talk to us about, because that's the drums when they willpower came in here. When Those drums are hard. Yeah, I was you, doing bro. something else. And <laughs> I, was the, I, was, I was in the hallway and came in. So talk, talk, talk to us about, uh, you know, <clears throat> producing on that on that album. Um, First off, thank you so much. But um, that beat, I'm... I heard the intro to Oxnard, the chase. And yeah. when that intro came on, I'm like, nobody touched that. And I know it just came out. Cause I, when I sent it to Anderson, Anderson was like, this beat is hard, but I can't be on this record. I just put it out. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't realize that was a kind of interpretation. Of, uh, no, it's not a good, I sampled <laughs> 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 and I played everything else over it. But I, I sampled like my, the initial sample, that whole, um, I need you more than you. That's the whole entire intro. And I just spliced it up and started playing it on the keyboard and then making the song. Wow. Jeez. So that, the beat, that beat came together so fast. And then um, Ty was like, man, you need to turn around and send this to, uh, to Little Brother. No, he was like, yeah, send it to, what did he say? Yeah, send it to Little Brother. I was like, all right. And I sent it to... Fonte and Fonte called me back and said, "Yo, bro, <laughs> uh, yeah, put that one to the side." Jack. That's it. <laughs> That's what he said, Yo. and I was like, "All right, done." And then um, they sent me Black Magic. They crazy. That was crazy. That's dope. That was nuts. Yeah, that was the drums on there. Is just so thank crispy you, bro. And hard. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to hear that instrumental. Yeah, he played the <laughs> instrumental, and uh, you do have my email address. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I got you. Sick. Yes, well, yeah, man. I mean, bro, this is this has been dope. I feel like uh, you know we needed to have this conversation. Um, it's a lot of stuff going on in the uh, the producer world right now. A yeah. lot of stuff. Let's talk about. Yeah. Let's talk about collaborating. Let's talk about the business of and how people are. Some people are coming together. Mm-hmm. Some people are going in separate directions. Yeah. Um, so let's start with collaboration. Lately, it's become the cool thing. Right. But I've always felt like it was important to the culture. What are your thoughts on collaborating? I think that it's important. I mean, if anybody thinks that they can do it by themselves the entire time, then they're those are delusions of grandeur. Come you know on. what I'm saying? So yes, sir. At the end of the day, like um, it takes a team to build a man. It takes a team to build a statue. It takes a team to build a building. It takes yes. a team. So if you want it to be done right, then you have to understand the importance of a team. You feel what I'm saying? So I, I love working with people. I don't like a lot of people's viewpoint when it comes to business, mm-hmm. especially when they're jaded or skewed. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like if we're going in the studio, the first thing I don't want to hear out your mouth is – Yo, what's my percentage? Or am I getting paid up front? Or this? Like, we have to make the record first. Let's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's, yeah. just, let's just see if we even gel first. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then but I'm going to make sure everybody's going to get paid. Right. But it's like at the end of the day, is that's why people are now kind of shying away from collaborating because there's way more ego coming in the room than yeah. your creative juices or yeah. your creative spirit. Like, there's so much that walks in the room before you even get to work. That's that right. It's like, man, I don't. I'm cool. I don't want to deal with dude. This is true. You yeah. Know? Yeah. We, we, all of us deal with that, man. It's always a, oh, hold on. We got a guest coming in right quick too. Uh-oh. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of that. A lot of times, uh, people walk in the room, they always want to get to the business. It's like, yeah. why? Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? Like, there's yeah. so much music to be made here. Yes. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. a lot of times, and, and you know what? I found it to be the people who really, Never even really got anything off that yeah, always come with a lot of they they come with a lot green. of baggage. Yeah, it's like uh, you know, where do, where they do that at? <laughs> yeah, I think it, everybody's so busy trying to uh, protect themselves by something that could happen. Like I said, there's a lot that comes in the room. You you haven't even gotten in the room yet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And everybody's trying to protect themselves from being screwed over. Or this and blah blah blah. Like you're screwing yourself over from the opportunity. Mm-hmm. We haven't even started turning on equipment yet, and you're already killing the mood. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We'll. I definitely want the business done. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but don't come in here and just start putting. You know, this Demand. is mine. This Demand's is mine. On the table, this is right. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. What about the school of thought that, you know, if you have kind of management or business representation, you let your management or whoever kind of deal with that. And I'm not even going to talk about that right now. Is that something yeah. that, that... No, um, I mean, I, I, and that's why you have business people there. But if you have nothing happening in your business and you have a manager that's taking 10, 20% of nothing, yeah, you waste why time. do you have a manager? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm like, like, but I want my half a penny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ace ass boy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just important. Like I, I would never go to somebody and say, "Manage me," and I have nothing to manage. Drum up the the beginning of, That's of free the game. energy. Yeah, get the inertia going, and yeah. then you know have somebody help you support that. We got a guest walking here. Uh, homie Mark Bird walking. Yeah, yeah, walked yeah, yeah, Mark Bird. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit maker. <laughs> we just spoke about you a minute ago. We was talking about you about Bob. Look at his gold teeth. Look at him. 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 Look at all the jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> Just having a good time here at Bandwidth Studios, you know what I'm saying? I love it. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, good. let's uh, let's bring him in, man. Let's uh, come on, come on, have a seat with us, brother. No, man. Y'all give it up for CJ though, man, for kicking it with us, man. In the building, my brother. Wait, I don't got a mug. Oh no, we are gonna make that happen, oh, bro. And we got some. It look like it's deliciousness going in there. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Well, We've been uh, wanting to get Mark Bird on the, uh, on the podcast for uh, a couple months now because yeah. when uh, Rhapsody album dropped, yeah. I saw that Homeboy had the intro. I'm like, the intro? I'm yeah. like, and then it's crazy. And it's like, so, yeah. you know, we had him on that show a long time ago, but God bless him. Props to you, man. man for like, appreciate you know, it. That, appreciate that dope yeah, yeah, Bird, only, Bird was on the like show when we was at the crib. <laughs> <laughs> Bird yeah, pulled yeah. up oh, to yeah. the crib. On the oh, yeah, that was when everybody was calling in. I was like, oh, I'm coming. Yeah. <laughs> That's I don't know how me and Mac made it home that night. Either. Oh yeah, cause boy, oh, yeah, we you had, talk about had drinking. Had <laughs> we was going crazy. So how you been doing, sir? Man, uh, great. I have zero complaints in the world. That's, that's I dope. Can't complain at all. That's yeah, really look dope, at my brother. Man, I'm gonna tell you why man, it's dope. Guy, my man. personal experience. The reason why I think that's extra dope is because I've had great conversations with my brother. Yeah. yeah. When. Things weren't going so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. the battle was really right in front of him. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, but I've yeah. never seen anybody say, I deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you now, you posted something, might have been this morning. Might have been a, or maybe because you know, Facebook Facebook yeah. be messing up the uh the yeah. algorithm. Yeah, yeah. So I might have got your post a few days late. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. it was like a throwback. It was it was the Kanye session. Oh yeah, and you was... wrote on there that you were going through it at the time. You had just lost your car. Yeah. You had like seven bucks, like a legit yeah. Yeah. testimony. Yeah. yeah, and then boom, things just started to turn around. And I'm looking at you now, bro. You probably the happy. I've seen you now many times in the last couple of months. Yeah, you just look happy, bro. You just look like it's all good. Yeah, Man, bro. I'm I'm at complete peace. That's, that's so good. It was yeah. like basically what I was writing on the caption was like, you know, when I was out there, I lit, I legit had $7. My car was repoed. I remember having to call AT&T and tell them that my wallet got stolen mm. just so they wouldn't turn my phone yeah. on. Crazy. I had to make the whole story up. Yeah. Like, okay, I lost my debit card. I, I got away. Oh, they're going to shut you off today now. They, they yeah. might. <laughs> Just, <laughs> retro, they be like, oh, he lied. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm all good. I'm good. <laughs> but it was also in that moment. I remember every day I would leave out of the studio and just go stand in front of the building and be like, "Damn, I I came out here to DJ a show. I was supposed to go home to go four home. days ago. Right. Still and here. Then I started to immerse myself in the process." That's what the purpose is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I wrote a couple days ago, we get so fixated on a goal that we forget to be in love with the process. And that's the most fun. That's where the happiness is. Come on. What so, did we talk about earlier? Yeah. We, we so I, I, I remember me and you were talking. Yeah. I remember, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad that you're here because I remember having a conversation with the biggest homie of all time. And, oh, yeah. And he yeah. told me, he was like, you have to do the great thing. And when he told me that, it was just like, it was confirmation of everything that I was already thinking. I stopped working with everybody. Yeah. I started telling everybody no yeah. and just creating what I wanted to create and build. And wow. I, at that moment, I'll I tell you now, like until that point, 
that was when I started to make the best music of my life. Hmm. Wow. So uh, that's I, big. If y'all didn't get music, if y'all didn't get music in that time, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, bro, no pause. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. That's yeah, that's, 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 that's what happened. So, man, I'm just like, I'm super blessed. That's just awesome. super happy with it all. That's awesome. We were talking to Focus earlier about, in my opinion, one of the best albums of this year is the Little Brother album. Another album that's like one of the best albums of this year that's critically acclaimed is Rhapsody's album, yeah. Eve. Yeah. And the very first song on there, Nina, is produced by you. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about that. How did that come about? Oh, man, it was a funny story. Um, mm-hmm. We was on tour last year, um, Saha and Crit tour, and we were in North Carolina. I think I was doing laundry. Just We had an off day, as a matter of fact. And my man, Scuba Steve, a.k.a. Cold Red, is cool with Ninth and everybody else. Okay. I'm doing laundry. He hit me like, yo, get back to the bus. I'm about to go to Ninth spot. I'm like, all right. I come back with a bag of wet clothes. I'm like, all right, I, I ain't even finished right drawing. Now. We going right now. <laughs> word, so word. We get there. We just hanging out. We cooling. i never forget it because it was Air Max Day. So, you know, you got to wear your Air Max on Air Max Day. For sure. Well. And uh, E. Jones was in the studio. He had the Tiger Air Max. He was killing us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I owe you one for that. Yeah. Um, so we were just all hanging out, and it was just a really good vibe. It wasn't even, I wasn't even thinking about playing music. I actually got to watch Knife make a few beats, and that nice. was just like, That's dope. wow. And then I sat in with Crisis for a minute. It was great. Who's crazy, by the way? Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Crisis. We need Crisis on the oh, show. bro. Hey, <laughs> yeah. So Rhaps- Rhapsody, Rhapsody came in, and we were all just hanging out, and somebody was like, yo, go play her some beats. And I was like, okay. Mm. So we went in back. I played a joint. She picked like twelve records, but the Nina record. I remember Knife came in the room. Was like, "You play that again?" It's like, "Okay, cool." It's like, oh, God. <laughs> so he left out, and we was still going through beats. He came back and was like, "You play that one more time." And I mm. went back to it, played it. He hit the. Whew. He's like, "Start it over." I had to play that record like seven times. So at that point, I was like, "Man." This might be something special, That's but fine. even too, you know, for me, I'm still a, I'm still a fan. Yeah, I'm yeah, still yeah. like a kid in this industry. Meaning, when I meet people, it's like, yeah, I grew up watching you. <laughs> so for Knife to ask me to run a beat back five, six times, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Oh, you know, yeah. Even if the record didn't get picked that moment, right? That's. That's a special moment. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 I was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cool with that. And then it was like, they hit me and was like, yo, we want to use this record. So boom. I'm like, all right, great. And then it got sticky. They didn't, uh, they didn't want to clear the sample. Are you serious? So then they had to send, uh, they sent me a Betty Wright version to flip. Mm-hmm. So I flipped the Betty Wright version. Then I guess Nina Simone's people were, um, they didn't like the way that the pitch sounded. So mm. then they wanted me to repitch it to where it sounded more natural. But when I got the the version that I used was a live version. Mm-hmm. So her octave was a little different. So I had to pitch it mm-hmm. where it sounded like her original. I had to do the wow. Betty Wright Jeez. version, mm-hmm. all of that, and still no clearance. So I was just sitting there chilling, minding my business. Like, actually, we had wrote the song off. Mm, like, it, wow. was, it was done, and... I get a text from Rhapsody and was like, yo, they cleared the original version. Then Knife called me. And what's crazy is the day that they got the clearance, they turned the album in the next day. Whoa. Wow. Wow. So, That's what's up. Bro. That's God. That's God yeah. right there. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <coughs> ninth hour, ninth clearance. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick. But I was so proud when I saw that, man. So, so that's how it came about. But I remember, because I remember I hit Focus, because the little brother album had came out. And I was in Chicago. I called Focus. I was like, yo. <laughs> I was like, I had to call you. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, the, the, oh, my God. Man, when I heard that record, I felt so good. Like, when I say good, I was running that, I was running that back like. That's a blessing. Man, man. maybe I think I listened to that record like maybe like five, six hours straight. No, you, you no missed, exactly. He played the uh, instrument of the Black Magic earlier, and we were all yeah, like. Yeah, we were all like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I, I was, I, I'm listening to the joint, and I'm like, okay, this is rocking. And then I remember uh, Charity hit me, and she mm. was like, yo, what, what you think of the little brother? I was like, I ain't made it past Black Magic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'll get to it later. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Love, but nah, man. man. 
It's one of my favorite producers and one of my favorite people ever. Like, seriously. Yes, you are. No. Yes, you. You. <laughs> you. 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 Spider-Man. I love it. <laughs> <That's> Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah, so that's crazy, man. So what's what's up now, man? What's going on? Like, uh, you know, good things happening. Yeah, yeah when he yeah, smiles like that, that's yeah, good. Yeah, we just, about- well, what's really dope is we just had this conversation about uh, uh, breaking our own artists. Yeah. yeah. And so I know that's what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk about it. Let's go. Um, uh, we got we got two people under our belt right now. Yeah. Um, you know Dante Higgins. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um. Man, working with him has been everything. Charity, him and Charity worked together before. So she was like, yo, we're going to do it. I feel like we should do it with Dante. So I was like, all right. Um, if he's serious, he'll mm-hmm. come out here. Mm-hmm. And that's all I said. And I want to say like three days later, he was on the flight. <laughs> wow. I'm like, oh, okay, he for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this guy really than I thought it was going to no, get. Um, so working with him, it was finally finding somebody with the the skill, the gift, the spirit. Spirit is everything. Like, yeah. man, if your energy ain't right, I don't care who you are. I don't That's even right. want to be in the room That's with right. you. That's right. Um, and then on top of that, his work ethic. I was like, finally, somebody that's going to work as hard as we're going to work. Yeah. And it, it was effortless. It was like he came once, we cut records. Right. Came another time, we cut records. We even cut records over here yeah. with you at your spot. Mm-hmm. And we looked up and we was like, oh, we got an album. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> I was like, done, done. So then we just started, mm-hmm. we just kept moving and shaking. And, man, we just really building it brick by brick, like, every step of the way. The reason we haven't released much music is we really want to do it the proper way. So it's marketing and PR yeah. and getting the proper backing. Like, yeah. But this, I've never felt that compelled to put it all on the line with an artist. Wow. So that says a lot about him. And then we just started, um, well, it's an R&B artist named Matt B from Chicago. I've been working with Matt for some years now, but we decided to lock in and we did a whole EP together. And then in doing that EP, we just, I mean, and Matt has worked with everybody from Tricky Stewart to B. Cox and like he's been around. And when we were creating this EP, it, it just, it felt right. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, this is what I wanted the music to be. Uh-huh. So we was like, all right, cool. Well, let's, let's run it back. Let's just keep running it back. If this is, if this is it and we feel great and you feel great, then that's what it is. let's just keep yeah, going. Yeah, that's, that's so, right. so that's really what we're doing now is just like, I'm in a space where like, we not really helping you build as an artist. Those one, two record things, like, I ain't, I ain't about to work hard and send you <laughs> right. 12 beats for you to pick one. That's nah, right. you better come yeah. over here and get a whole sound. Come on, man. Yeah. Other yeah. than yeah. that. Do you, see how, do you see how the conversations go back to where we were talking yeah. about, though? Yeah. Like, just, it's it's <clears throat> something that has to be, It we need to talk about this stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I feel like just we as a community of producers, I think we're just wising up, man. I think... Yeah. We've done it all. Like, I mean, we we got out, we chased the placements, we got the placements. Mm. And you realize that, like, even with a record going number one in some cases, it's like it's only a certain amount of fulfillment in that. Hey. Because you're not really attached to it. That's right. You know what I mean? I've got many friends, man, that have done really well, but some of them were never even in the room with the artists that went yeah. big. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so that doesn't, that's dope. But it's, <laughs> it's, dope. Nah, it's yeah. not really what right. you want. I know that's not what you wanted. Right. Yo. And so we, we're hands on now. Like we get to do this. And so I think this is really what. It's so crazy that you say that because moment of transparency. Mm. Like, yo, I really, out of every one of my placements, it was nothing that I was really like fulfilled with. Yeah. None yeah. of them. The Rhapsody record was probably the closest to me being fulfilled and. No dope on Sundays, just because you got to see my DNA all throughout that entire yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Hyder Prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. Out Shout out. But other than that, like everything else is is it was a cool thing, but like working like and building shit. something, yeah. Yeah. that's where you feel. That's where it's at. Yeah. It feels the best. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, like I, I had this conversation with somebody recently and I was like, Man, you look at all of these guys, all of these producers, 
man, we it's a lot of guys that got number ones, a lot of number ones. Mm-hmm. Where that legacy at though? Yeah, Dang. right. Dang. Facts. Like, man, I I want to build something. Yeah, something great. Yeah, yeah, right. that's crazy. Right. Mission statement. Yeah. <laughs> so, where yeah. do we see the industry going for producers? Where do we see like the future for uh, producers and songwriters and people behind the scenes? Where do we see that going? I oh. just. I just started watching this. Uh, no, I watched a documentary on Prince um, when he started writing Slave on his face. And I was really trying to find out, because Prince is one of my main like inspirations. and He was doing um, mail order for MPG um, to get music out that he was making that the label wouldn't back. And... That was happening back in the 90s, bro, like 93, mm. 94. He was doing that, like, on the internet and all that stuff, yeah. right? We're now at the full fruition of what he was doing. I agree. I remember um, buying his album at the ticket office. Yeah. I went to a concert. He came to South Carolina for on. He for, started bundles. And I had to buy the, in order to get the album, I had to come to the concert. Yes. It was crazy. And then wow. that night he sold about 40,000 records. So Wait, I was like, time. this is player. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, everybody's going to start, they're going to start going independent. Yeah. And the more independence, the more, it's going to be an influx, just like when Lil Wayne started doing all them daggone mixtapes yep. and it was way too, you know what I'm saying? There's going to be an influx of music because now the audience is consuming way faster yeah um the life expectancy of an album is three to six months not even th- a full six months yeah you know what i'm saying so now you have to put out almost three projects a year to stay relevant yeah you know what i'm saying so when you look at that no label is going to be able to keep up with that much yeah they're not going to be able to back it yes, they're right. not going to be able to promote it they're not going to be able to market it not three albums a year. They're not going to be able to. Right. So the independent is now going to have more power. Yeah, they're already doing it. It's funny yeah. you're saying it because I just had a meet a music meeting <clears throat> over an album that I worked on, which when we started, it was an album. But by the time we left the meeting, it was now three EPs. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going, uh, all right. Okay. Yeah. You know, same right. budget, though. They're not changing that much. You know so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right, man. I think that the, I think the plus in all of this is the growth of these distribution networks. I think yeah. that um, <clears throat> having the ability to get your music all the way to UK if you want to in a, yeah. in a few, you know, pushes a of a button. clicks. A couple yeah. clicks and it's out of here, man. You know, so I think that that is the new move. I think that yeah. um, artists and producers alike should be looking for funding of some sort. You know, if you got it, you got it. If you got to go find it, go find a good partner, somebody yeah. that can help you. But don't over, <clears throat> don't over invest in yourself. Don't spend more money than you have to. Because yeah. Because a lot of the stuff that you can do online, you can really do. Yeah. For a fraction of a penny. Yeah, a fraction of a penny. Yeah, you just gotta. You just <clears throat> well, gonna take time. You, yeah, it's gonna take I, some time. I'm glad you cleared that up because yeah. um, you know, some of us are a little further along in yes. what we do than yes, others. Yes, so. Yes. Yeah. What I would consider a necessary may not be necessary for a new producer or a right. new artist. Right. Um, but I still think that, you know, it's just a great it's a great place to be because yes. you can do project deals. You yes. don't have to do overall you, branding full company deals anymore. It's right. like, hey, I'm gonna put out this record. And that's it. This record's gonna cost that's me right. this much money. Can you help that's right. me? That's right. And so let's break this bread. And and now the distributors and the streaming, this makes it forever now. So yeah. it's like you're guaranteed whatever this is back because regardless, it's as long going. as it's up yeah. streaming somewhere, yeah. we're always going to be creating income. 100%. Right. Yeah. So that's dope, man. Big shout out to Tina Davis, Gazi, and Nemo over Ooh, there. They, Empire, oh, they, man. Kill it, they, they are putting it. it down. But they're actually helping these kids enterprise themselves, and I love that because they're backing these kids. They're not just turning around and taking them in and making a bunch of money off of them and and telling them, look what you did for us. They're actually building these kids up, and um, I'm super happy that Tina's over there. Tina is somebody that I've known for a long time in my career. Mm -hmm. Um, When she was working over at Def Jam, and Ghazi and Nima have been always 100. Um, I've known them for years uh, because of Ty. 
it. So and they, they've done some great things, man. Because Empire amazing, is absolutely bro. on top right now. That's Empire like is literally an empire. That yeah. is really the go to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, that's where every that's for the sure. first thing everybody is looking to do. It's like right. I want to yeah. go over there. Yeah, because yeah. they like you say they they put on for the artists yeah. and not just not just the take thing. And it's like with a lot of these companies, like Will was saying, you got to understand that. Like now, we're the power. Yeah. Like we can do everything that y'all was making us wait yeah. a year and a half and one point right. five million to do. We can do this when y'all was taking home. our masters. That's right. and yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. other thing. Like, come on, man. When y'all, no, y'all can. What will main dame say? Y'all, y'all a quarter water. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what you get. You get this quarter. Shout out NYC. <laughs> so, in addition to what you're talking about, talking about Will, what can producers do to position themselves in this new, in this new? I, I think that you know. I don't know. I'm trying to work that out right now. But what I what I foresee as a way to position myself is exactly what Focus was saying earlier. It's about finding an artist really building something valuable, right. you know, and once I have that in place, then I'll present it to whatever entity I feel is going to work best for me. Yeah. Um, I found out that it doesn't even have to be a music entity. Mm. You know, um, there are companies right now, they're, they're liquor companies, they're, you know, um, uh, beverage companies. The kid, IDK, he's signed an adult swim. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Wow. And that's how you yeah, do it. he's dope too. Shout yeah, out that's IDK. how you do it. Like, you look for partnerships. Like, I think that people forget that in the beginning, records were made to sell record players. Yeah. So it wasn't, this was never about music. This was always about product. Mm -hmm. So if we could keep that in mind, that helps us figure out how to move music. So right. it's like, listen, man, um, you know, like you got homie, you, you's big in the shoe game. Bro, you probably could get Puma or somebody to do a deal with you on some music. Mm -hmm. Did I say that loud on, mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. You sure did. <laughs> cut, cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on, but I'm just trying to work on that. Cut that out. Re or, or retailers. Yeah, yeah. Retailers. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm basically saying that there's many, many ways to do music. And it yeah. doesn't have to yeah. be. Red Bull has a label. Dude. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It they doesn't have, have to be company. national. Yeah. It could be local, too. There's yeah. still, there was a, there's many opportunities, man. I just hey, that, Master P was. Is local. Come on. Hey okay. man, come on. That dude. Stop playing. Yeah. <laughs> man, I watch I watched this Drink Champs episode the other day and I was just like, bro. Whew. When you do when you talk about a man made man, that's him. He made himself. Bro. Man. Self -made. I'm telling you, that, yeah. that you know drink what he, champs, has, he though, broke it down. That most of us don't. What? Extreme patience. You got to have it. Mm, no, I think that there. you have to look at the fact that there are people that have it, and those are the people that are in those positions. Yeah. Because Dre had it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you got to look at the fact that he was willing to walk away from it all and start it up again to show that it didn't make me. I made it. Ooh, we. Ooh. And you we. You feel what I'm saying? What's funny is that's where I found myself. Yeah. Like, last year I was just like, you know what? Yeah. I'm cool with everything. Yeah. All y'all be cool, no hard feelings, but I'm going over here. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I did the same thing in, in 2008. Yeah. I walked away from it to see if it was making me or if I was an important part of it. Yeah. And when I, I left in 2008, I didn't leave kicking up dust and I didn't have no hate or nothing like that. I just had to align myself spiritually and get to that point where you believe in yourself so much yeah. that whether you say it or you internally say it and believe it, yeah. that mantra, I deserve it. You have to work for what you deserve. That's right. But when I get it, if you hate it, that's on you. That's on you. I deserve it because I worked my butt off for it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So it's like Ooh. at the end of the day, when I did that, and when anybody can walk away from something, that shows an amount of patience that most people don't have. That's right. Because they start getting scared. Now I'm irrelevant. Now I got to, okay, how do I figure out how to, <laughs> it shouldn't even be that. It shouldn't even, if it's backing you into a corner, don't leave. Yeah, you know what I'm right. Saying? Like, exactly. If that's well, you what know, it's doing to you, that's something you know? I'm dealing with now as well because now I'm termed OG. Yeah, hey, I ain't OG, <laughs> nigga. Hey, man, <laughs> <laughs> I, I got cats hitting me up. I be, I be, I be shouting people out like, "Thanks, OG." Yeah, <laughs> just get no, started. Bro. Yeah, exactly. So you know, I'm glad you spoke to that because that's also something that needs to be dealt with. You know, it's like we're getting older. Yes. But we're also wiser. Yes. We're also but, more talented now than we were yeah. then. But that's what makes you an OG. Yeah. yeah. And embrace it. Yeah. And embrace it. Because yeah. it's, to me, uh, the people in the Bible that they talk about that are gray head, that's a crown. 
crown. Those are the people that you go mm. to for wisdom. Ooh. Those are the people you sit down and you're trying to gain knowledge from. If they call me OG homie, that means I have something that they need and I'm going to give it for free. Come Just on, like God man. gave me my gift for free. So at the end of the day, bro, say that. I love that OG. Say give that. me that OG yeah, all day. I'll be like, homie, okay, cool. Let's <laughs> yeah, say that. Let's talk. Y'all can wait a Come few on, more young blood. Me, <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I'm talking old for no reason. Come on, young blood. Let me talk to you for a minute, man. <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's a blessing, man. It is. Oh, it is. And that's here, where man. you get your blessings from. Mm. You turn around and you throw that boomerang, it comes back to you tenfold. Amen to that. Yeah. I, I, I agree to that. Yeah, it's so dope. Let everybody know, uh, Mark Bird Focus. You know, where can we find y'all at on social media? Any website? Uh, I'm any, at. Any, any... I am Mark Bird. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll know it's me because I'll have gold in my mouth and on my chain. Yeah, yeah exactly. everybody watching. Sound, sound, sound without focus is just noise. So that's when you, you see the three that's dots, you, that's yeah. me. That's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> y'all make sure y'all switch up these emails <laughs> and uh, the mailing addresses yeah. so that the. Uh, the pub checks go to yeah, word, right. word. Hold on, wait. If the pub check, oh, okay. So my name is Bernard. <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, yeah, we, I need my pub. I need my pub. <laughs> so I got um, kids and a wife. Uh, but Bernard. That's Edwards. what I thought. <laughs> Mark, 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 Mark. That's Bird. what I thought. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, if you want to follow me on on any social medias, it's Focus the number three D O T S. That's all across the board, and I'm only on. Probably two boards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, do everything. How, how, how can we find out about your uh, master class as well? Um, it's on my Instagram. Um, plus, uh, my wife has uh, put together a website for it. So it's www.fadersupmasterclass.com, if I'm not mistaken, oh. or envision.com. And that's uh, the company, the entertainment company that we put together. So it's oh. NVX. Hold on. NVZXN.com. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm old, man. I don't, I don't want to hear OG. nothing from the oh, I'm OG. old, bro. OG. No, no y'all say OG. I'm old G. I'm old, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Um, um, it's pretty simple. I am Mark Bird, B Y R D. Yes, that I is am. literally everywhere. <laughs> yeah. like, I think it. people, for you, I think people also need to jump on your Facebook because. Where we are really active on Instagram, I get a lot from his Facebook page that I, I really enjoy. That's when I, I can share most of the stories. Yeah, and not, it's really dope. You know, it's dope to keep up with. Y'all so, gonna make me get, I on get Facebook? A, I deserve a shirt though. Can um, I? Can I? Can I still get one? Yeah. Um, yeah. What's I, up with that? I am Markbird dot com has everything. There it is. And he got um, some God level stuff up oh, there. Oh, God level. Stuff. No, that's not there yet. Y'all gotta oh. wait on that. Yeah. Y'all gotta wait on that. That's That's, that's, okay. But no, all of it is part of the branding. Um, the I deserve it. Um, is is actually on the way back. That's dope. Okay. Um, I just I had to like you said I had to take a break. Yeah. yeah. Align myself and get. I In had other to words, back. copyright. That's it. That was yeah. it. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that, that was done. <laughs> no, that was done. You know, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you when I did it. I was um. <laughs> I was chilling and my homeboy sent me a text and he was like in like a Target or somewhere and mm. they had a I deserve a shirt. I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> Are well, you serious? I need that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. What's crazy is like I've been so I, I made sure I took care of that properly. <laughs> gotcha. Um <Yeah. laughs> even down wow. to my name, the reason why my name is the same across all boards is nobody you might actually remember this. When we met you in LA in two thousand six was 2007 old i'm old i had on a t-shirt <laughs> i don't remember yes in 2007 <laughs> that said i am mark bird wow i've been branding that since then that's dope in 2007 yeah when i met you then yeah that's dope that's crazy well i got somebody i don't know who you got doing your shirts but i got somebody that can help with that hey man yeah let's talk about that yeah, it is. let's talk about that Ooh, i'm always let's talk online well come on why y'all share why can't y'all share <laughs> yeah nah, um, look so. at the, you see the hate error <laughs> 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 I'm actually going to drop a mini documentary on it. I deserve it because I want people to know really what it's about and where it came from. Manifestation, bro. Yeah. It's real big. I get it. Yeah, so. Do that. I get it. Yeah, it's, well, it's getting cold outside that. so I can run when it's cold. Don't start. Nah, no. See, look yeah, at it. Yeah. We, about to, <laughs> start doing. we about to do these 5Ks. I did eight miles today. Me and Mark used to do this. Uh, what was it? 100, 100 miles, miles and running? 100 miles and running. Every month we would run 100, 100 miles. 100 miles. Real talk, and I know I don't look like I used to do I'm that. Down with that. <laughs> I wanted to run 100 miles, man. Let's kick it off um, next month. No, no, the beginning no. of Wait, next month. Wait, I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. Sign me up. I'm with Come you. on, man. We got about five days. 
Five days. I'm with you. Start. I just want. I want that conversation I'm, to stay on that side of the table. Nah, you ain't right. do. It's no, really no, no, not no, no, bad. No, 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 it's really. No, 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 no. Listen though. So, so I say this. So, I say this. I say this. And this is just. This is just real. This is real. I got five kids. I'm five kids and running. I'm but listen. <laughs> so you like 500 yeah, miles Yeah like 100 <laughs> percent Like I want to go out And run for well, no reason at first it seems There better be a basketball In my hand it Football seems, It seems like a lot But really it's Roughly three miles a day And it All I would do is Go a mile and a half Somewhere And knowing I got to Go back home And it was easy By the time I got back I was like Yo oh, y'all are talking Like Yo. a mile and a half It's not that It's bad. right down the you, block I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you my secret It's the music Yes, I was gonna say that. Playlist. But the thing is, I never listen to anything hard. Mm. So like when I'm running, I tell you my my three favorite Baker listening ass boy. My three <laughs> my three favorite albums to run to. <laughs> Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Come on. <laughs> okay. Because I get I'm gonna try that. I get completely lost in how great the music is. Okay. I'm not thinking about where I'm going. Kendrick's to Pimp a Butterfly. Come on. Amen. I ran to that. Yeah. Man, uh, I, I did. I Oh, boy, I did myself a disservice. Like, I ran to that one day, and I got so lost in listening to the album that, that was when I stopped. $10. Yeah, when I stopped, I was like, damn, I got to go back. Mm. Yeah. That was like five miles. Yeah. That's crazy. I gotta find See, I'm the I like hard stuff. I listen to Thug Life, Tupac. But see, <laughs> that's, all eyes on me. That's straight the, up. <laughs> that's the shit that's gonna have you running out of breath. You be like mile in, like. Ah. All right, so yeah. what's on? We'll um, get that so going. So yeah, it's all it's always the music or make sure. It it ain't on for me. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> well, I, I just want to personally thank y'all for coming today. You know oh, what I appreciate saying? you. I know focus. This was really a focus gathering. Yeah. Um, he's doing some things that, and none of y'all showed up remember that <laughs> I can't Punch. I'm here it's only so person good, showed though. up was CJ and Bird man I'm here it's so, it's and so Will and Fort Knox is in. <laughs> Fort Knox say something man Happy, 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 happy. Yo, happy. yo, wait. Oh, that knocks in the building. Yo, how is it that he's on the other side of the room? Hey, we're at microphone. Yo, and his level is the, the same as That's like. the voice of Atlanta, homie. Yo. The moment you get off the plane, when you land here, the, that's what you should yeah, hear. That's, bro, like. You hear Fort Knox and the mayor. That's it. Yo, on the real. I always, and I always, tell, I always tell him he was so instrumental in us moving here. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. Like, we came down here. Because of a beat battle at Apache, we heard about. Oh yeah, my homies, yeah. my homies was hitting me like, "Yo, you gotta come!" And I'm like, "Whatever." We drove all the way down here for a beat battle, That's and right. we lost <laughs> in the first round. Though. Don't feel bad. Wow, I, we got hey, to play like I one lost beat. Two. Yeah. So, oh, you lost to him? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Yo, that was one specific time, man. No, time. no, I ain't even gonna tell you about what he did to me yeah. a couple years ago. <laughs> This had the chair, had a charity water yo, event. Oh Pat's no! Talking about, hey man, you yo, know about to focus. So, so we go, to, we go to L.A. <laughs> first of all, tripping. first of all, it's a landslide. We're battling in L.A. Now, to my defense, you know, I, I actually to focus his defense, I was supposed to be on his team. Yep. <laughs> so see, you see, it all goes so, out the window then. So I got a call. Oh, from, a, from, another, from another <laughs> from another good friend of ours. And basically the team was the deck was a little stacked. He needed a little help on his side. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna jump on your side. Now mind you, I'm I'm setting the scene. We're in LA. So everybody got their pairings. This guy puts me against Battle Cat. Oh, oh. Battle cat. Whoa. It was like, I don't care what I played. <laughs> Play. I was going to lose that one. And it was so funny because I remember me and Cat was standing on stage and I looked at him and I was like, look, I know you're going to take this. You can play anything. Just don't play we can the record. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say the name of it. I was like, the record. And he was like, I got to play at home. I was like, oh, damn. And it no, was like, I the, think it was like the first it was like record. The first record. <laughs> <laughs> I literally think he just he yo, started he did, with yo, it. He like, did. he turned the crowd lost it. Yeah, I was like, like uh, I just, I started dancing on stage. I knew I lost. It was like, I, I take Bro, my, this. my team was all OGs. Yo, had Warren it, G, oh Battle, Battle God. Cat, God. Uh, Rick Rock. Rock King. Oh, man. Rock yeah. did charity. Rock, yo, oh, Rick that was Rock so was wrong. Disrespectful. <laughs> no, he was disrespectful. He played his Jay Z stuff. That was a he, when he played Mace Breathe Stretch Shake, it was yeah, like, it was come on, bro. bro. Like, now you're just overdoing it. Right. Yo, we need to do that. Yeah, that was fun. 
Okay. We need to do that. Like, Will Power been trying, he trying to shut down the show, and we're all like, so remember I that time it. back <laughs> in the day. <laughs> now, we, we, <laughs> he's like, I want to say thank you very much. Yeah, thank you too. So remember <laughs> that time. <laughs> Like three times, he was like, "So I want to shut this down." Yeah, so four knocks, three times. Yeah. I'm sorry, brother. This is your show, you know. But remember that time when I was just hey, Jack, hey, Jack, dig baby, yeah, dig that. Sound like the beginning of what's going on. Hey, hey, brother, come over here, young, and let me talk to you for a minute. This is dope, though, man. But yeah, man, thank y'all for coming, man. It's oh, man. Really, truly a blessing. See, this, this is, is going to be... Th- 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 what, four times? <laughs> All right, we going to go out on this one. Let's do it, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's going to be an amazing episode, man. Uh, you can follow you know us on our social media, man. Shout out to Airbit. Shout out to a band with, you know what I'm saying? Free Game Podcast. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Free, free. Love. That's it. Here we go, Yo, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Free Game Podcast. If you did enjoy it, make sure you subscribe uh, to the Airbit channel right below. Just hit, hit subscribe on the button below. Or you can go to YouTube.com slash Airbit. You know what I'm saying? If you're feeling the podcast, make sure you share it. Let your friends know. Also, there's an audio version of the podcast. Look in the notes below and you'll see where to subscribe to that. Yeah, yo. Free Game Podcast. Free Game Podcast.